السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه وبعد Brothers and sisters Welcome to another live edition of your program Ask Oda Our phone numbers are the same Same all numbers Air code 002 Then 0238552549 Alternatively the same air code Then 011 Two five double zero eight six seven nine, and there are new numbers. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this is like a pay phone. In order to call, there will be a surcharge. Basically, this idea is to support the channel through paying for the phone conversation per minute, obviously. But we're still keeping the other numbers for those who cannot afford it or they are not interested in paying whatsoever. Barakallahu feekum. The numbers appear on the screen and we truly appreciate your cooperation and every kind of help and assistance you offer to the channel. May Allah the Almighty bless you all. Uh, the first question we have is from uh, Ihlan Eid. Says in, he says, a question regarding an unemployment insurance in Europe. Uh, which is uh, unemployment insurance takes a little amount from your salary every month depending on one salary then if a person loses his or her job um, the insurance company will pay 80% of their salary to the person is that lawful or unlawful any commercial insurance is not permissible a commercial insurance where the supplier charges you um, monthly payment and uh, by the end, if anything goes wrong, they compensate you something not in proportion with what you paid. Like you're paying 20 bucks every month. And if you get laid off, they pay you up to 80% of your salary. Basically, there is no compensation here. It's a matter of two things, interest and gambling. Because if a person makes one payment, then he loses his job and he gets 80% of the salary paid to him by the insurance company. He did not actually do anything if he made one or two payments or three payments to the company to, to deserve to get that much in compensation from the insurance company. And on the contrary, if the person happened to pay for 10 years, then he quit paying, he loses everything. He does not get anything. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Arij from the KSA. Salam alaikum, Arij. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, Islam. Uh, I have two questions. Yeah. My first question is I heard in your last episode you have uh, talked about nail polish that we can uh, put it off uh, our prayer time. Uh, uh, someone told me that uh, suppose we die wearing the nail polish on our uh, nails, uh, from the dead body, nail polish cannot be removed using the nail polish remover. And that is why our hustle will not be valid. I want to know, uh, Sheikh, is it true that from the dead body, a nail polish cannot be removed and uh, our hustle will not be valid? That I want to know. Okay, I did answer. And can I ask him a second question? Sure, but that question was answered in the same answer uh, that was answered in the sister with regards to... Yes, uh, no, uh, yes, yes, I've heard your answer, Sheikh. Uh, but you didn't answer regarding uh, nail polish coming out of uh, out from the dead body's nail. Yes, of course Someone I told did. me the dead body becomes cold, so the nail polish will not come off the nails of a dead body. So yeah. I was very worried about uh, uh, hotel, you know, being valid. Okay, Barakallah Fiki. Second question, Sister Arij. Question, uh, uh, this. Uh, the haram, actually when we uh, put haram for Umrah or Hajj, uh, some people tell me the haram starts from the point we have a bath. Some people tell me the alarm starts when we put on our clothes and some tell me after we put our head cover. So I don't know from which point I should take as my alarm is complete. Okay. Is it complete after I wear my abaya and put on my scarf after that point or from the point I have a bath? I want to know, uh, Sheikh, so that you know I don't take any, I don't make any mistakes in the alarm. Okay. I want to know from which point my alarm starts. Sure. Thank you. 
Thank you, Sister Ayush. Um, obviously, al-ihram means to assume the intention of commencing into the act of Umrah or Hajj. And that will be achieved by simply intending to be in ihram and you announce at talbiya not the intention, by saying labbayka Umrah, if you're going for Umrah, labbayka Hajjan, if you're going for Hajj. When the person is at the miqat, the appointed place, whether if he is traveling uh, by land or airborne, so he is in line with the miqat. If you're coming from Medina, for instance, there is what is known as Abiyar Ali. So when you are in line with that place, or if you're driving, then you stop by in this place and you say, لَبَّيْكَ عُمْرَةً You are in a state of ihram. As you know that for the ladies, they do not have a specific outfit to perform ihram in. Your regular everyday clothes, I mean your proper hijab. And the ihram of a woman is in the hands and the face. If she's not around men, she is not supposed to cover her face nor hands as long as she is in a, th in a state of ihram. So it is not the clothes which will declare whether you are in ihram or not. Rather, it is your intention. Once you assume this intention to commence into Umrah or Hajj, you're officially in ihram. Accordingly, you have to avoid the list of restricted acts, removing any hair or nail or wearing any perfume or using any scents, you know, or any fragrant soap or shampoo or body wash, uh, as long as you are in a state of ihram. As you know that the list of mahzurat uh, al or what is restricted, it all begins whenever you say, labbayka either umratan or hajj. A person may prepare for the ihram a few miles before reaching al-miqat. Or a person is coming from far away from Europe, from the States, so they dress up in ihram because they don't have a facility to change into an ihram outfit, like a male, for instance, is wearing the izar and the rida. He is taken off from Chicago or from New York, JFK, and he would not make a, an intention of ihram until he is approaching the KSA an hour or so or 45 minutes before, or if he's uh, going through a transit, Jordan, Cairo, then after taking off from Cairo, an hour later would assume the intention of ihram. So the outfit itself does not mean that you're already in a state of ihram. The state of ihram will be activated once you say, labbayka umratan, or labbayka hajjan. Barakallahu feekum. Um, Mujib Siddiqui says, is it permissible to work as a financial broker selling annuities, and life insurance, and other financial products of Western companies to earn commission from the sales? Well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna allaha idha harrama shay'an, harrama thamana. If you work as a broker, then you sell whatever it must be lawful. If you happen to market or sell anything which is forbidden, so the earning out of this business is not permissible, is unlawful. And if you're a broker and you work in halal and haram, then your earning is mixed, halal and haram. In proportion, it depends how much money you made out of, out of selling life insurance. Also, if it involves usury, then this segment of your earning is unlawful. Many people think, that earning unlawfully, if I give in a charity, that will make it up. Just recently, somebody asked me that um, we copy some medical books that are very expensive, and we sell them to the students for a fraction of its original price if they are original. Is that permissible? I said that is not permissible. Because in Islam, Islam honors and respects the personal ownership. Definitely the scientist, the author, the scholar who spent his or her life in making uh, this book or this syllabus, it caused them effort, time, health, time from their family and money, of course. So when you just come and you steal it and you sell it to others because you make copies of it, that is not permissible. 
He said, <clears throat> this is what I figured, and that's why I give in a charity to compensate for that. This is a wrong understanding. It would not waive the punishment for doing something prohibited because you've taken the property of somebody. There is a difference between somebody who is broke, does not have the means, cannot afford to pay for that book. So he made a copy for himself to benefit out of it. And somebody who is making copies to resell them and profit out of that. There is no comparison. These are two different cases. So the profit in this case is definitely haram. So he says, I donate a similar amount of my earnings so that uh, I keep my business going. And meanwhile, I get rid of the haram. Don't you think by donating what you earned unlawfully, that would waive the haram? You have to recognize that this is haram, so you should not do it. And you quit dealing with this haram. Then, of course, you donate and you give in a charity a similar amount so that you will not be uh, blameworthy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to what is best. I'd like to remind the viewers that our old numbers are active as well, the free numbers. And uh, on the screen, uh, these numbers are pay for numbers. And um, soon, inshallah, they would also display the old numbers for your reference, which are 002. 0238552249 and alternatively area code 0020115008679 the numbers are on the screen as well um, this is a tough question from brother uh, allow me not to mention the name he says that uh, he's married 45 days ago and he just came to know that his wife had committed adultery before marriage. And she's also hidden this matter from everybody. Uh, now she repented or she wants to repent. And uh, she wants to spend the rest of her life with me. So now sometimes I feel sad and also angry. What should I do after this call? Insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Maryam from Libya. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, Sister Maryam? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alameen. I'm fine, alhamdulillah, Sheikh. Sheikh, I just want to ask. This is my follow up question. Last Saturday, I, I called Sheikh Asim. Could you do me uh, a favor and mute, uh, mute your TV system, Maya? Because please. you know my my mother tongue is uh, I am from Philippines actually. Uh, Sister Marian, please mute yes, your TV. Regarding reading Quran, it is allowed for me to read the Quran. This is allowed for me to read the Quran in English trans English meaning. Masalan, I finished the whole chapter in Arabic. So to understand more. I want to read it in English during Ramadan. Is it allowed? Okay. And the second question is, uh, reading Surah Yasin to a dead person can benefit him or her? Okay. That's all, Sheikh. Shukran. Barakallahu feek. Wa feek ki barak. Thank you, Sister Mariam. Salam. Okay. Salam. Salam. Sister Mariam is asking, after reading the Arabic text of the Quran in Ramadan, if I read the English meaning to understand and comprehend what I read, is it permissible? Of course it is permissible. If you're asking about the permissibility, it is permissible. Perhaps you wanna ask, will I be rewarded for that? Anyone who's making any effort to understand the Quran will be rewarded for that as well, no doubt. Subhanallah, in the sound hadith which is collected narrated by Uthman ibn Affan and collected by Imam al-Bukhari Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said khayrukum man ta'allama al-Qur'ana wa'allama the best of all of you is the one who learns the Qur'an and teaches it to others so no doubt learning the Qur'an if this is your mother tongue if this is the language that you understand better you would be rewarded for that how much reward I have no idea 
because when it comes to the unseen, we only relate what was narrated. It was narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ قَرَأَ حَرْفًا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ فَلَهُ بِهِ حَسَنَةٌ وَالْحَسَنَةُ بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا Whosoever reads a single letter from the book of Allah will be rewarded for it, one good deed for each letter, and the one good deed will be multiplied ten times. So each single letter you read of the Quran, you get ten good deeds for it. This is when you read it as it was revealed in the Arabic text. Making an effort to study the tafsir, to read the ahadith that explain the Quran, to study it in English, to translate it. Yes, you'll be rewarded, inshallah, for that. How much reward? I don't know. Um, Yasin, one of the chapters of the Quran consists of 83 ayat, very short rhythm, very great meaning, contains a lot of stories and especially life after death, belief, and its confirmation, the means of steadfastness, it's an amazing surah. But there are many, many hadith were narrated concerning the verses of Surah Yasin. They are fabricated, and some of them are weak. That's why people chose Surah Yasin to call it the heart of the Quran, and there is no sound reference in this regard. And another reference which says that if you recite it for a um, certain number of times, that would relieve the pain or the punishment of the dead person. And also, there is no sound reference to support that. So you're seeing like the rest of the chapters of the Quran, the entire Quran is great. There comes the next point which is, can I read any chapter of the Quran for the dead person? There is a difference of opinion among the scholars, whether reading the Quran, then donating the word of its recitation to a laid person will benefit him or not. Why there is a difference? It's such a great thing. Because when it comes to ibadat and acts of worship, we are not allowed to prescribe a new act of worship or to design a new form or format of a prescribed act of worship. Rather, we are and we should be limited to what had been already prescribed by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why he said, follow and do not innovate. This is only within the boundaries of the acts of worship. So it has been narrated in various hadith when somebody asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that a late father, a late mother died, can I perform hajj? in his or her behalf, can I fast in their estate, can I give any charity, yeah, 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 all of that, can we settle his debt, yes, all of that, and the dead person will benefit out of that, but there is not a single reference which talks about donating the word of the recitation of the Quran, or the prayer, or the prayer to somebody else, whether living or dead, that's why the vast majority of the scholars pause they say, we don't know. We can say this is authentic. So al-aslun mana. The original case is that you should not do it because it is not approved. There is another party of the scholars who say that since any virtuous deed, if you decide to donate it, to donate its reward to somebody else, it may benefit him. And by analogy to the hajj, to the fasting, and the, <coughs> the giving in a charity, similarly it would benefit uh, that the person to recite Quran and give him the reward of your citation. Again, even though it sounds good, but I don't have reference. We don't have reference to that. And it would be better to stick to what the Prophet ﷺ have approved. In addition to, what you can do is recite as much Quran as you want. Or pray as many prayers as you want. Voluntary or nawafil. Then afterward, you make dua, you raise your hands and you make dua for your late mother, your late father, or for any person whom you like. And in this dua, the dua is most likely to be accepted then in regular conditions due to the virtues of doing a great ibadah such as the recitation of the Quran. Now with the tough question, which I refrain from mentioning the name of the questioner, that he found out 45 days after he got married, 
that his wife had committed adultery and she confessed to him I find it very difficult to understand why would a woman tell her husband about her past had she repented because when you repent brothers and sisters you're not supposed to share that sin or talk about it even as means of regret to no one you know Allah the Almighty blessed you by covering and concealing your sin and blessed you furthermore by repenting because you do not repent because you want to repent because Allah made it easy for you to repent ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُوا تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُوا It is Allah who facilitates the tawbah so no one is not no one is allowed to reveal their sins afterward especially in a condition like that am I saying that a person could do as he want and they achieve the other they cheat or deceive the other party and get married as a matter of fact no I'm not saying that whenever we conclude the marriage contract the wali the guardian who's given this girl in marriage to this groom he says I'm giving you my daughter my sister or whoever her name such and such and she's either virgin or thayyib big virgin thayyib thayyib been married before because virginity will make a big difference it will show that she's been with somebody else before or not so in this case the contract is absolutely used to void it because there was deception from the beginning but if you think that she sincerely repented she sincerely repented and she's behaving herself you will be rewarded if you can cover her and if you can guide her and assist her to remain chaste. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to what is best. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Maryam from the USA. Sister Maryam. Hello. Assalamu yes. alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa Go ahead, Sister Maryam. Okay, I have three questions for you, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, my first question is that uh, in the U.S., they have the graduation doors that the kids are wearing when they graduate. So I would like to know if it is uh, permissible. My second question is that... It is that permissible to do what in the graduation, Sister Mayim? Excuse me? You said in the graduation ceremony, what is permissible? Um, the gown, you know the dress that they make wear with the hat? Can you say that again, please? The dress, the robe, the, the, rope. the dress yeah. that they're wearing. Yeah. The gown, yes. Is it permissible to wear it? Yeah, is it permissible to wear it? Okay. And my second question is that would you mind explaining the three days like um, today, I know it's the first, but some of us say that it's tomorrow. So would you mind expl explaining how they, they calculate that? You mean the beginning of the month of Sha'ban? Right. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sister Maryam. I have one last question. Mm -hmm. um, at the mosque that I attend, when they make the ikhama and when they come to the point when they say ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah are people supposed to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or we need to remain silent okay okay so bless you sheikh and thank you very much for you're most welcome you. sister Marian from the usa thank you so much uh next on the line brother musa from nigeria Assalamu alaikum, ya Musa. Okay, alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa shaykh. Welcome to the program. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa shaykh. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, my question is that is it allowed to give a charity to someone that he or she is a Muslim and is not praying? Okay. Yeah, that's my question. 
thank you, Musa, and we're going to take a short break. And inshallah, in a few minutes, we'll return back to answer Sister Maryam's questions and Musa's questions. Please stay tuned. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk on your favorite channel, Huda TV. I'm your host, Arkham Rashid. They actually did uh, such and such that you're accusing him of in your mind. Uh, so now I want to start off with my right hand side, uh, Brother Ahmed. If you can just tell us what your thoughts were on that video, what can you extract from that video? Would you say some of the youth uh, turn to drugs, especially you know in your country, if if they don't have jobs or you know it's because they want to get away from their daily normal lives would you say that's okay, a reason absolutely that? that's true some yes. people just resort to drug as the last option because they, they get themselves straight out and they're instead of depression but they don't know where to turn for help sports per se is like a, a communal social activity whereas mm -hmm. it, you know, it collects the community together and it, it bonds brotherhoods together you know mm -hmm. it's it's very social in its aspect where you interact with you know, your teammates or your players in a team. So I think um, a message would be just to stay completely <laughs> away from it. Even we can say, oh look, it's haram. TV commercials motivate viewers into immediate action and to sway consumer loyalty from one brand or service to the other. That's why we're here for you, to help you sell your products and services by using creative ideas that bring life into your own TV commercial. Advertise your business and branded products and services on Huda TV. We will offer you fast-paced and energetic 30-second affordable TV spots. Advertise on Huda TV, acquire fresh customers and stay within your budget. For more info or to receive a quote, please send your inquiries to Advert at Huda TV. Huda TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Sister Mariam from the USA asked about wearing the um, outfit during the graduation ceremony, wearing the robe. Is it permissible? It is permissible because this is an outfit for a particular occasion. And as long as you're wearing your proper hijab and you wear the rope uh, above that, it is permissible, inshallah. And congratulations for whoever is graduating. Um, with regards to the month of Sha'ban, some people say it began today, some people say it began yesterday. And subhanAllah, I just saw the beautiful crescent and I had the opportunity to make the dua and it was an indication that today uh, at least here in the Middle East is really the first day of the month of Sha'ban it's about citing the Qusim um, normally this issue is not really problematic except during the beginning of the month of uh, Ramadan but the rest of the year people do not pay attention to whether it, it is today or tomorrow the beginning of the lunar uh, month in the lunar calendar but um, as far as I have seen myself that today which is um, today's Tuesday right uh, is the beginning of the month of uh, Sha'ban uh, some people say we didn't see the Christian yet and they still uh, consider today is the last day of the month of Rajab it's a, it's a valid opinion based on the moon citation but I hope they follow that uh, always not pick and choose so sometimes they say well some people calculated and said it will be tomorrow but we can see the crescent you should follow what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said he said sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatih we consider the beginning of the month whenever we see the crescent and we consider the end of the month whenever they see the crescent of the uh, next month assalamu alaikum <coughs> alhamdulillah 
يهديكم الله ويصلح بالكم سستر ألينا من باكستان السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام شيخ نعم go ahead sister uh, Alina yeah brother has three questions to ask uh, may I ask him now yes please go ahead you're live okay the first question is that what is the ruling about playing with dolls and watching cartoons okay okay second question okay and the and the second question is that I have heard that uh, Mushrikeen, Munafikeen and the Kuffar would live in uh, hell after life forever. Mm. After this life forever. So is it that a person who indulges in Bidda does the same as a uh, Mushrik? And is he supposed to uh, have the same fate as the Mushrik is supposed to have in hell? Who supposed to be like whom? Wh who is... Uh, sorry? You said that. What did you say? You said who's supposed to have the same fate like a mushrik? The person who indulges in bidat, bidda. Bidda. Okay. Yeah. So is he supposed to share the same uh, fate as a mushrik is supposed to have in hell? Okay. Second question. Okay. And third. And the third question is that uh, are we supposed to sleep directly after praying Isha prayer? Isha. Isha. Or uh, are we supposed to sleep right after that? Okay. Okay. These are the three questions, Sheikh. Thank you, Sister Alina. Barakallahu feek. Um, <clears throat> Sister Maryam from the USA, her third question is concerning Al Iqama. And it is also called Al Azan because it is a Muazzin who called the Azan to declare that it is a prayer time, who calls the Iqama to declare that it's time to offer the prayer. So, with the gas to al-iqama, when the mu'azzin says in the iqama, ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah, are we supposed to say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? First of all, that with regards to repeating after the mu'azzin during the iqama, the vast majority of the Muslim jurists, basically uh, the school of al-imam al-shafi'i wa abu hanifa wa al-hanabila, are of the view that the audience should repeat after the mu'azzin, likewise after the adhan. So when he says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, you repeat the same, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, then Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And also when he says, Qad iqamati salatu, Qad iqamati salat, you say, Aqamaha Allah wa adamaha. Qad iqamati salat, indeed the prayer has been established, we're ready to pray. So you say, Aqamaha Allah wa adamaha. May Allah establish it always and maintain it. Aqamaha Allah wa adamaha. Then also they say that you should say the same dua that you repeat after the adhan. This is the opinion of the vast majority. When it comes to sending the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ, upon hearing his name, it is prescribed in every condition. Sometimes when you recite in the Quran on your own, and on your own, I mean not in the prayer, and the name of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is uh, mentioned like Muhammadur Rasulullah then you say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it is prescribed any conversation anyone who's not even addressing you and you hear the name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we should send the peace and the blessings upon him and after the Azam what do we do we send the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam similarly after the Iqama Barakallahu Fikum Sister Maryam from the USA Brother Musa from Nigeria, given in a charity to a Muslim who is not practicing, who is not uh, praying. Is it permissible? It is permissible. Will you be rewarded for that? Yes, you will be rewarded for that as far as guaranteeing the reward. But you have to have uh, an intention behind giving this person. And also try to bring this person close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is Allah who made your heart soft to assist this person. So you have to know that had it not been for Allah's softening your heart to give him help, he wouldn't have gotten this uh, rizq. So you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first degree. You should uh, thank Allah by offering what Allah wants him to offer, by offering the prayer. So in the hadith, but I'd like to quote this hadith after this call. Assalamu alaikum. Abu Safwan from Kuwait. Assalamu alaikum Abu Safwan. 
How are you? Fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you oh. for asking. Okay. Zakallah. Sheikh, I have a question about this Surah Nisa, this Ayah 24. Well, Mosanatu Mena Nisa, Illa Ma Malakata Iman, Kitabullah, Alikum, Bohilla, Alikum, Ma Varaz, Alikum. So the, the meaning I read it is that you can take them against the money you uh, you know you owe they owe something. So I didn't understand this. What does it mean? You say Wahilla lakum ma waradalikum. This ayah Abu Sufwan is concerning al muharramatu min al nisa. Al muharramat, a woman who is your mahram. This ayah and the ayah before concerning those who are entirely forbidden for one to take in marriage. The previous ayah which talks about حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ أُمَّهَاتُكُمْ وَبَنَاتُكُمْ وَأَخَوَاتُكُمْ وَخَالَاتُكُمْ وَعَمَّاتُكُمْ etc. This ayah mentioned the list of those who are forbidden for a person to marry forever. Then also وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ It is forbidden to marry a woman who is already married. الإحصان Al-Ihsan in the Qur'an comes in four different meanings. Al-Ihsan comes as chastity, and that is in ayah number five of Surah Al-Ma'idah. Al-Ihsan comes by the meaning of marriage, and that is in ayah number 24 of chapter number four, Surah Al-Nisa, when Allah the Almighty, the Almighty says, وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ يعني You're not allowed to marry women who are already married. So that people who are in the West, they think that getting a marriage license is something new. No, it is not permissible to marry a woman who's already married or in her idda. Then Allah the Almighty made some exceptions. When he says, after all, after this long list of the maharim, أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ مَا وَرَاءَ ذَلِكُمْ أَن تَبْتَغُوا بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ مُحْصِنِينَ غَيْرَ مُسَفِحِينَ The word تَبْتَغُوا بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ You pay the dowry. Muhsinina, aiming towards chastity, to marry. Ghayra musafihina, not taking them as girlfriends or mistresses. Outside marriage relationship is absolutely forbidden in Islam and in every other religion. But alhamdulillah, we're trying, we're maintaining this so far in our beautiful religion. So the meaning of an tabtaghu bi amwalikum, that you have to pay the dowry. It is a man who have to pay the dowry to uh, the woman. That's why he says, فَمَا اسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ بِهِ مِنْهُنَّ فَآتُوهُنَّ أُجُورَهُنَّ فَرِيضَةِ The word أُجُورَهُنَّ refers to the dowry and it's a fard. بارك الله فيكم أبو صفوان. Brother Musa, I was talking about the hadith. So in hadith in which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, a man decided to give in a charity. He did it in private, at night. Then in the morning, تَحَدَّثَ nas. He heard people talking about, did you hear what happened last night? تُصُدِّقَ اللَّيْلَةَ عَلَى زَانِيَةً Last night somebody gave in a charity. Guess what? He gave whom? He gave an adulteress. He said, Alhamdulillah عَلَى زَانِيَةً I did not really mean to give my money to a, a prostitute, but Alhamdulillah, in any case. Tonight I shall give another charity. And at night he gave. And then in the morning people started talking. تصدق الليلة على سارق You know somebody last night gave a, a charity. Give it to whom? Guess what? It was a thief. So you heard about it. I said Alhamdulillah على سارق I tried my best but Alhamdulillah in either case. I shall make it up tonight. He gave in a charity to somebody whom people started talking about it in the morning saying to صدق الليلة على غني He has given in a charity to a rich man. He's not in need for the charity. So Allah the Almighty showed him a night vision, a dream. In the dream, he was told, as far as your charity, it has been accepted and the reward is guaranteed. Regardless, it was given to an adulteress, it was given to a thief, it was given to a rich person. Your intention was to give in a charity, so the reward is guaranteed. As far as your sadaqah, which went by mistake to an adulteress, hoping and hopefully that 
it will make her refrain from practicing prostitution. Maybe she was doing that because she was in need for money. And now since she got the money, it is Allah who delivered the money to her in a way or another. So you never know. Your sadaqah will be beneficial also in this regard. What about the thief? He said that it may help him to stop committing theft. What about the rich? Oh, this rich person was stingy and he used not to give in a charity. So giving him in a charity actually incites him and urges him to give in a charity likewise. This is what you have seen in a night vision that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him. My preference always, of course, to support those who are religiously committed. So whenever I give my zakah or people ask if you know somebody to give the zakah, we have to support those who are practicing the deen, those who are good manners. I don't like to give my money to somebody who smokes. I normally tell the guards, you know, for, you know, the building, the work, you know, if you quit smoking, we'll be more than happy to assist you financially. But the reason I don't want to give you that much, because I know that you'll take the money from me and you'll buy cigarettes, you know. So we keep balance. Somebody is in need and he is not praying. Yes, I will help him and I would ask him to pray. I will take this opportunity to give him da'wah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Maryam from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Maryam. Wa alaikum assalam, Shaykh, how are you? Fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you, Sister Maryam. Uh, Sheikh, I have three questions, but first I have a small request. Uh, my father-in-law passed away the day before yesterday. Uh, no, no, please, no, no. I request you and everybody at the team to make dua for him. May Allah have mercy on him. May Allah shower him with his mercy. And may Allah give his family, all his family patience. Ameen. 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 Uh, Sheikh, my questions are related, are related to his death. Um, he passed away in the U.S. And uh, my husband and I, we are settled in UAE. And his, uh, my father-in-law's daughter and wife, they were in Pakistan. And uh, they could not travel to the U.S. since, uh, I mean, it happened all of a sudden. And there are certain preparations that you have to make in order to get into the U.S. But regardless of that, they all collectively agreed to proceed with the, uh, with the burial immediately in the U.S. itself. However, they wanted to see his face one last time. Um, so my family in the U.S., they showed the deceased person's face live on Skype to the son, to the wife, and to the daughter. Now, um, I'm a little confused because I don't know if this was allowed or not. So if this was not allowed, then is there any kafara to be offered by the person who showed the deceased face and the people who looked at it? Uh, that's my first question. And uh, my second question is that in Pakistan, there is something known as Poyam, which is the third day where the family of the deceased gathers at his house and they recite Quran to make dua for him, thinking uh, that the salab of this reaches, uh, reaches the deceased person. So is there any authentic source, uh, any, any uh, authenticity in this? If you could please uh, reflect on that. And uh, my last question is that I was... I was explaining to my parents that when a spouse dies, they are allowed to, they will also shroud them and offer a salat al janazah for them as well. This is in reference to the hadith by Aisha uh, Razak al uh, To which my father said that there is, an, uh, there is a verse in the Quran that says that the wives of the prophets are your mothers. And whatever they were allowed to do is not applicable to you. So what, what should one understand from this interpretation? And um, there are a lot of people who believe that when, um, when a, either one of the spouse dies, they are no longer mahram for one, well, for one another. But if that is the case, then how are the spouses going to be uh, reunited in Jannah? Uh, okay. so if you could please call, clarify this for me, please. Okay. Thank you, Sister. Uh, Mariam from United Arab Emirates. I have too many Mariams today, mashallah. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Aisha from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Aisha. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Shaykh? Fine, alhamdulillah. Welcome to Ask with us, Sister Aisha. My question is, is it permissible for a group of women 
to pray congregationally with one of them leading the prayers. Okay. Any other questions? No. That's the only question. Yes, it is permissible, Sister Aisha, for women to pray in congregation and have a woman of them lead them in the prayer, and she will be in the middle of the line. Um, can I know the procedures? Can I know the procedures? Please? What was that? I'm sorry? Do, I mean, do we do it in the normal way? Yes, you do it in a normal way, except that for the woman imam will be in the middle of the line of women. Barakallahu feeki, Sister Aisha. Uh, Sister Alina, right? Um, first of all, playing with dogs and watching cartoons. Playing with dogs, no, you're not allowed to play with dogs because they are najis. And touching the najasa of a dog, particularly the mouth and the saliva, if it touches your clothes, if you touch the dog and you get soil with the saliva which is impurity and najasa the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said idha walagha al kalb fi ina'i ahadikum falyaghsilhu sab'a marrat ula hunna bi turab just imagine that when the dog licks in any vessel this vessel cannot be used by any human unless if it is washed seven times one of those seven times or the first time to be washed with the sand or with the dirt to that extent that the saliva of the dog is very, very impure. And how would you play with a dog unless if you have a dog, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, keeping a dog at home prevents the angel from entering one's house, and it deducts from the balance of the reward of the person that much like a mountain of hasanat on every single day. It is not permissible to keep a dog as a pet. Um, um, Sister uh, Alina, also from Pakistan, asked about watching cartoons. Uh, like watching any uh, video material, it depends on the contents. You know, if the cartoon are lawful, we actually were working hard on producing uh, cartoons for the youth and for the children, for the kids to watch uh, that have a good, uh, you know, good subject and a good presentation and subhanallah it costs us much more than presenting a program like this we're trying to provide a halal alternative but the cartoon where it, it, it instills in the mind of the audience nakedness girls are naked or wearing revealing clothes and these love stories and uh, music and all of that it is not permissible because that is planted and instilled in the mind so whatever if the contents is permissible, then it is permissible to watch it. Is the fate of al mubtada' or the person who does innovations will be similar to the fate of the non-believer to reside eternally in fire? We cannot say that, of course. If a person is a Muslim and says, La ilaha illallah, and he has a correct belief, al bidah innovations vary. Sometimes there are innovations like the sister just asked about on the third day, then on the 40s, then a year later, these anniversaries and the commemoration of the death of the person, these are all innovations. And everybody does know that it is an innovation, but they still do it. Okay? It will not make them non-Muslims. Only those who do not believe in the oneness of Allah, or they have corrupt belief concerning Allah, such as equating Allah to human beings or to the creatures, or associate with Allah any in worship, they would abide eternally in hell, as Allah the Almighty says, خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا abada. But anyone who has an atom weight of iman in his heart, even if he were to be punished for his or her sins, لا يُخَلَّدُ فِي النَّارِ will never remain eternally in fire. Rather, after being punished in proportion with the sin, until purified, they eventually move to Al-Jannah. May Allah the Almighty take us to Jannah immediately without previous punishment or even reckoning. Allahumma ameen. Do we have to sleep immediately after Isha prayer? The sunnah is the Prophet ﷺ used to pray Isha, then he would recite his adhkar and go to sleep because he would get up to pray to Hajjud and get up early. 
But sometimes people have to study. People work a night shift. People uh, working in the delivery, working in the hospitals. So if you have the choice, that is the right order to sleep soon after Isha, then you can get up to pray uh, tahajjud before Fajr or night prayer, pray Fajr, then you start your day and take advantage of the early part of the day where the whole barakah lies in this time. There are exceptions if you are one of the cases which I mentioned earlier or similar to that. Brothers and sisters, by that we come to the end of, uh, let me answer Sister uh, Maryam from United Arab Emirates first, uh, if you can give me like half a minute, inshallah. Uh, as, as far as showing the face of the dead person uh, and his family looking at him, last look, it is permissible. And this is what Abu Bakr did when he came and looked, uh, uncovered the face of the Prophet Sallallahu and he kissed him between the eyes and he made the dua for him. So that is permissible. If it is permissible to see him visualizing physically, if you're in front of him, then it's permissible if his family is far away uh, to show him, to show his face to them on the, uh, any of the media means. That is permissible, inshallah. Uh, saying that, uh, could a spouse wash the dead body of her spouse or his spouse? Yes, it is permissible. That is permissible. And this is what happened with Abu Bakr Siddiq. It was his wife um, uh, who washed his body. So that is permissible. And the Indo-Pak, understanding that death separates the couple from each other is not true. There is no reference whatsoever concerning that. So they are still husband and wife. And if they both, inshallah, enter al-Jannah, then both of them will be husband and wife in paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the conclusion of our life the best conclusion ever. Make us die on tawheed, saying la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test